Oh, hey there. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Insta360 1R. Let's go. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dave from Chase Summit and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Insta360 1R action camera. The Insta360 1R is not a new action camera. This has actually been out for about a year. It launched, I think, last January, but right now it's on sale at a pretty aggressive price point, so I thought it would be worth looking at today. The pricing on the Insta360 1R isn't very straightforward. There's a bunch of different packages. There's like a snow package, a ski package. The one I have here is called the Ultimate Kit. It's probably the most expensive option and it comes with a whole bunch of accessories and different mods. I'll tell you what a mod is in one second. I previously had the Insta360 ONE X about a year ago when it came out, and that was an awesome camera, but I had a couple of issues with it. It didn't have great audio performance when you talk to it, like uh, vlogging or whatever, it just didn't sound good. And also it wasn't waterproofed or very durable, so I was always afraid to bring it ice climbing or even for running. Now the Insta360 ONE R is targeted more in that rugged, you know, kind of outdoorsy situation, so hopefully this fixes some of those problems for me. I've been playing with the Insta360 ONE R for a few days now, so I've got a pretty good idea of what it's capable of. In this video, we're gonna walk through what comes with the 1R Ultimate Kit, all the different components inside, how they go together and how it works. And then later in this video, we're gonna do some testing against my trusty GoPro Hero 9 Black that's become my everyday camera. I'm curious if the 1R can hold up against the GoPro Hero 9 Black, and if it does, it might become my everyday carry. Before we get into it, if you found this video helpful or entertaining, make sure you give me a thumbs up down below. It helps out the channel a lot more than you think. And if you really liked it, consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. I'm really close to hitting that 20,000 subscriber mark, so definitely try to help me out there and hit that button. Also, we gotta pay the rent on this new studio, so please. <laughs> I also wanna mention that Insta360 did send this camera out to me for the purpose of this review, but this is not a sponsored video, so I'm not obligated to say anything good about it. So everything in this video is my honest, unbiased opinion. And if you are interested in picking up a 1R, I will have links down in the description for everything in this video. Those are affiliate links and they do help support my channel, but they cost nothing extra to you. With all that out of the way, let's crack open the box and see what comes with this ultimate kit. You can tell how good a product is by how well sealed these boxes are out of the box. There we go. We got there. All right, so here we are. We have all the various components and I already took this out of the box. I've used it a few times, so all the stickers aren't there, but this is how it was arranged when I first opened it. So like I said before, this is a modular action camera, which makes it very different from anything like a GoPro or an Osmo Action or any of those other cameras. Basically, it means you can pull this thing apart and make it whatever you need it to be for that day. The thing you immediately notice is the one inch mod at the top here. Let me pull that out. And you can see this thing has a really big lens on it and that's to house a one inch sensor inside. A one inch sensor means a lot of things. First of all, it means you can get better low light performance better resolution, this is a 5.3K resolution camera. This kind of sensor is not in any other action camera. This is really the only camera that has something like this, so it's pretty impressive. It's also got a Leica logo on there, so I don't know what that means, but it's there. And like I said before, this is a modular platform, so I can simply just pull this thing apart and put it back together again. I can flip it forward so I can have a front facing screen and put it back together again, and now I'm good to go. Below the one inch sensor, we've got the 360 mod. And this is really where the magic happens with Insta360 cameras. This is a 360 degree camera, which means it's capturing everything around it, a full spherical image in 5.7K. Pretty cool stuff. Now I said 5.7K, that sounds like super high resolution, but what it actually does is you can punch into a 16 by nine aspect ratio like a regular camera. What that means is this is just capturing everything all the time. So you don't have to worry about where you're aiming your camera. You basically just put it on a selfie stick, stick it out somewhere in front of you or strap it to the back of your car or your motorcycle, or whatever, do your activity, and then after the fact, you can actually reframe your shot in post-production using the Insta360 software. Next to the 360 mod, we've got the uh, little lens cap. This is just a little rubber lens cap that you can put over the 360 mod like this to protect the lenses because these lenses are protruding out from the sides of the device and really there's no other way around it because if they put a little hood around it, that would end up in your shot. Below the 360 mod, you get two Insta360 batteries. Again, this is the ultimate kit. In the regular package, you only get one battery, but you can purchase an additional battery for I think about 40 bucks. Again, I'll have that link down in the description, uh, affiliate links, all that stuff. Insta360 claims about an hour of battery life with these batteries and I think that's pretty true, but it really depends on which mod you're using. I think the one inch sensor actually takes a little bit more power, but I could be wrong. That's just 
what I've been seeing with my testing so far. Below the batteries, we've got a little uh, paperwork container here. Nothing I really care about there. <laughs> and then underneath the paperwork, we get the Insta360 1R cage. Now this cage is a lot like what GoPro used to have uh, with like the Hero 5, I think, when they, you know, you had to put your GoPro inside of a cage to mount it to an accessory. They had to do this because of the modular nature of this system. And it's not something I love. I don't love the cage. I, I've gotten so used to my Hero 9 Black and the fact that it's, you know, the mount's built right into it. I don't really have to worry about a cage. Another thing to consider for me, I go ice climbing and when you have gloves on and it's super cold out, you don't wanna have to fiddle with little latches and things like that just to swap out your battery. And another thing I've noticed about the cage is if you have the one inch sensor mod attached to the camera, you can't actually put it in the cage fully assembled. You can see the front lens cap here is just too big for this opening. So you have to actually unscrew this, take this lens cap off and then put it in the cage and then put the lens cap back on. Now, if it was 30 below zero and, you know, gusting wind and like really gnarly out. I don't know how happy about this I'd be. That said, they do have a battery door on the side here that is detachable. So you could actually just USB-C charge this thing or keep your USB charger uh, plugged in while you're using it and not have to worry about the battery life or swapping that out. But if you did want to swap out for like the 360 mod mid activity, you do have to go through this whole process with the cage. The cage is a little fiddly, but it's certainly not a deal breaker. It's just something to keep in mind if you do things with gloves or in cold conditions or in wet conditions or whatever. Even though this is a modular system and all of the seams are exposed to the battery and everything, it's still waterproof. It's waterproof down to 16 feet or five meters. And it's nice to have peace of mind, even if you're not planning on going swimming with it or whatever, if you're just running in the rain or you're ice climbing or doing anything in a wet condition, you don't have to worry about your action camera. Okay, I went on a little bit of a tangent there. Uh, the last item in the box is the Insta360 Invisible Selfie Stick. The reason why they call this the Invisible Selfie Stick is because it becomes invisible when you use it with the Insta360 One R. So the way this Invisible Selfie Stick works is there's actually a little adapter that comes in the box. Uh, it's that same GoPro style adapter, but instead of having a round on it, it actually has a little fin that sticks up and hits the camera and prevents the camera from rotating. And that's important because the stick is exactly the width of the camera. So it's keeping itself between the lenses. So the lenses basically can't see the stick when you're using it. So it makes it become invisible. And this is a really wild illusion for people who have never seen action camera footage like this before. Also check this out. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, you can do some pretty wild stuff with the 360 camera. You can do like that mini earth view and you can also just spin around and look at everything around me while I walk. Uh, I'm not moving the camera. I'm just doing this in software after the fact. So pretty wild stuff you can do with the 360 mod. Let's see what else I can do with it. It makes it look like you've got a little miniature drone kind of flying around you during your activity. And it's really like mind blowing. It really breaks your brain like, how did he do that? The overall build quality of the Insta360 ONE R feels really solid. It feels really well built, really well thought out, but it does concern me that it is modular, like all those little connectors and everything that aren't present on other cameras. You do have to worry about that here. However, in my use so far, nothing has given me issues. Everything works as planned. Uh, it seems well built. It is slightly larger than something like the GoPro Hero 9 Black, and that's because it does have the cage on it with the little latch on the top. Certainly not a deal breaker, and they both weigh about the same amount altogether. The user interface of the Insta360 ONE R happens all through this little tiny display on the front here. This is a very small display, but it's totally functional and it's really responsive. And of course, to get all the features out of the Insta360 ONE R, you will want to download the Insta360 ONE R app on the iOS or Google Play Store. This app is super intuitive. Uh, you, can, you can adjust all the camera settings in here. You can do your white balance and your exposure and all that. And you can also edit your footage after you shoot it. This is pretty important because the workflow with the Insta360 ONE R isn't straightforward. The files that come out of this camera are not like MP4s or movie files. They're a proprietary file that only works in Insta360 software. So you either have to use the phone app to edit your footage or use the plugin in Adobe Premiere to do it. I find the easiest workflow with this camera to be to edit it in the phone app after I shoot it, then export it to a standard file that I can drop into my timeline and edit it just like any other video. All right, so that's enough jib jabbering about the specs and what it's all about. Let's take these out into the wild and do some real side-by-side -side testing to see if the Insta360 ONE R can hold up against the GoPro Hero 9 Black. Oh man, oh man, this already sucks. The trail is totally flooded out. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of water out here today. All right, so we're running along now, shooting 4K, 24P. I'm totally soaked. 
How's the audio sound between these two cameras? This is also a good test of stabilization. We've got the flow state stabilization on the Insta 361R. And we've got the GoPro Hero 9 Black with Hyper Smooth 3.0. All right, so after all that, what do I think about the Insta360 1R, the one inch module in the 360 module? Well, I've kind of got a mixed bag here. So the Insta360 1R with the 360 module is just mind blowing. It's really enjoyable to use. I have so much fun with it. It's really cool to be able to unlock that creativity and come up with new techniques on how to use an action camera because all the rules that you had before with your GoPro or your Osmo action don't apply with a 360 camera. You can do some really wacky things with it, get new angles and really exciting ways to do things. I was trying, you know, throwing it up in the air and I was kind of, you know, hovering above me like as if it was a drone. It's just a ton of fun. And the stabilization with the 360 module is just mind blowing. It's like it's floating in midair, no matter what you do, uh, however you move the thing, the horizon stays level and everything is just very smooth. Image quality with the Insta360 1R with the 360 module is okay, but it's understandable because you're taking a 5.7K image and then scaling into a 1080p section of that image and all of the bit rate and everything gets kind of shrunk down when you do that. The image is totally passable, but if you watch it on a really large monitor at full 1080p, you will see some graininess to the image. That said, the advantage of that 360 module and having those crazy angles, it's totally worth it to trade off a little bit of image quality for some really awesome, unique angles and footage. Okay, so now let's talk about the one inch sensor and how it's stacked up to the GoPro Hero 9 Black in my testing. Let's start with stabilization. Honestly, the Insta360 1R with the one inch sensor doesn't have great stabilization. It does the job, but it reminds me more of like a GoPro Hero 5 or one of those cameras from that era. It does take the shake out and if I didn't have the, the Hero 9 Black to compare against it, it would probably look pretty good, but I do have the Hero 9 Black and it does exist, so it's hard to ignore. It was enough to take out the shake when I was walking and doing gentle movements, but as soon as I started running, things got a little bit crazy. Now, ignoring the stabilization, the Insta360 1R with the one inch module does have really awesome image quality. There's a lot of detail in that 5.7K image. When you zoom all the way in to 100%, it's very sharp. And although the colors look less vivid than the GoPro Hero 9 Black, it's actually better for people like me to work with when you put it into a video editor. But combined, when you have both modules, the 360 and the one inch, it is a really versatile tool. You can swap back and forth if you wanna get that really good image quality and you're not moving a lot. And then you can throw the 360 module on if you wanna smooth things out a bit. The one inch module on the Insta360 1R also has the advantage of better low light performance. I was seeing a much cleaner image out of the Insta360 1R with the one inch sensor than I was on my GoPro Hero 9 Black. So let's go back. If you are somebody who doesn't get into action sports and you do a lot of nighttime filming or photography, the Insta360 1R with the one inch sensor might be the better buy for you. In terms of audio performance, I think the Insta360 1R has gotten a lot better compared to my older Insta360 ONE X that I used to have. They've definitely taken note of people's complaints and made things a lot better. However, I still think the GoPro Hero 9 Black is the king when it comes to audio performance in action cameras. All right, now for the big question. Am I going to be switching over to the Insta360 1R for my personal needs, for my video creation for this channel? I think for now, I am. I do want to give it a shot. I want to try it out. I really enjoy that 360 module because it's so much fun. And the image quality out of the one inch sensor is really good if I don't need stabilization. And at the end of the day, it's all about having the right tool for the right job. And I think for most applications, that 360 camera will be a lot of fun and the right tool for the right job for me. So what do you think of the Insta360 ONE R? Is it worth getting over the GoPro Hero 9 Black or is GoPro still the king? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're planning on picking up either a ONE R or a GoPro Hero 9 Black, make sure you check out the links down in the description. Those are affiliate links that help support my channel, but they cost nothing extra to you. All right, I think that's all I got for you. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.